Earl Stanley Gardner's career followed the arc of the mystery genre in the middle years of the 20th century. He is best known for creating Perry Mason and the television show starring Raymond Burr. However, Gardner wrote for the Pulps during the 1920s, the book markets during the 30s and 40s, moving into movies, radio, and television as each new medium developed. All told, Gardner wrote more than 140 novels, 600 short stories, and countless non-fiction articles. Gardner was born in 1889 in Massachusetts. The family, which included two other sons, moved to California when Gardner was young. He grew up there, struggling in school when he clashed with the principals and headmasters. Throughout his life, Gardner was a mix of insecurity and bravado that alienated some while making lifelong friends of others. Gardner tried to embark on a conventional law career by attending Valparaiso University School of Law in Indiana. He lasted one month. He returned to California and began reading the law. He passed the bar in 1911 without formal education and later was asked into the law office in Oxnard where he quickly made a name for himself. The young lawyer quickly grew bored with the constraints of office work and looked for other ways to fill his time. After a stint as a salesman, Gardner decided to try writing for the pulp magazines. He slowly began to place stories in the pulp magazines. Having no patience for the pace of his success, Gardner increased his output. He started writing and later dictating more than 25,000 words a month, a pace he maintained for much of his career. He married in 1912 and the couple had one daughter, Grace. His dual careers in the law and fiction gave him little time for his family. Gardner and his wife separated in 1937, though they never divorced. Gardner covered all the possible permutations of what would come to be known as the legal mystery. While Gardner was not the inventor of this subgenre, Gardner powerfully influenced this subgenre with his fast-paced, plot-driven tales of Perry Mason, Doug Selby, and Donald Lamb. In most of the books, the plot tends on points of California law, drawn from cases in which Gardner had served as defense attorney. Though heavy on dialogue and lacking in descriptive literary passages and characterization, the tales won immense popularity for their legal realism and clever twists. Perry Mason appeared in a number of movies produced in the 1930s. Gardner hated the results and set up a production company to handle his most famous characters. Mason moved into radio, a soap opera for Procter & Gamble that ran until 1956. The same year, Raymond Burr starred as Perry Mason on television. That show ran for 271 episodes, with Gardner appearing in the final episode as an inside joke. The show was so popular that it returned as a series of made-for-television movies in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Gardner was a founding member of the Court of Last Resort, a project that he funded and ran. The court was dedicated to releasing innocent people who had been jailed. The idea for the organization stemmed from a three-part article by Alva Johnson in the Saturday Evening Post, which dealt with the wrongly convicted. Argosy Magazine ran a number of articles on similar cases. Gardner won the Edgar Award for Best Fat Crime Book for his 1952 work on his efforts. In its later years, the court interested itself not just in releasing innocent prisoners, but also improvements in forensics and the larger issues of justice. Gardner retired from the court in 1960. The court did not last long past his retirement. Following the death of his first wife in 1968, Gardner married longtime secretary Agnes Jean Bethel. Bethel was often assumed to be the model for Mason's secretary, Della Street. Using the vast amount of materials donated by Gardner to the Harry Ransom Center at the University of Texas, Austin, biographer Jeffrey Marks has written the first objective and definitive biography of Earl Stanley Gardner. Marks is the Anthony winning, Edgar nominated author of three previous biographies of American mystery writers from the 1940s 1950s.